slacking, primo buds. It's 80s month here on Noid, I mean, Otaku Evolution. So chill as we take a look back on the decade that gave us swatches, muscle men, and that really weird Billy Squire video. You know the one. You needn't ask where's the beef. The beef is here, spuds. So quit your car surfing and start couch potatoing, because this month is sporting three classic 80s anime. Well, maybe not classic, but they're certainly from then. Ah, the 1980s. A magical time of synthesizers, shoulder pads, and the inexplicable career of Ralph Macchio. It was a time of experiment with anime, as the Japanese economic bubble was still expanding. Out of this, we got the OVA format, as well as some truly ambitious projects like the movie Royal Space Force The Wings of Onamis, which I have reviewed. Another project I consider as unconventional, but for different reasons, is the 1986 movie They Were Eleven, based on the award-winning manga by Moto Hajio. It was animated by Magic Bus in conjunction with Kitty Films, both of whom brought us The Legend of the Galactic Heroes OVAs and movies. Sure is dark in there. Go on, move in. Okay, you don't have to push. What an old ship. Could be an ancient derelict they found drifting in space. Heads up, everybody. Stand clear while I seal the bulkhead. The premise is that a group of cadets are tasked with boarding and bringing back to working condition a derelict vessel orbiting a planet. However, the group was only supposed to have 10 members, but there are 11 of them. Paranoia rises as they fear sabotage by their extra number. But who's the odd one out, and why are things getting more difficult as time passes? It's a series of misadventures and misfortunes as the 11 try to suss out the extra and resolve the challenges before them. Let's go over the characters. There are 11 of them, and they're really the only characters in the movie, but fewer of them actually matter, so let me just tell you which ones those are. You have King Mayan, who's an A-type personality, naturally suspicious of others, kind of an asshole, but pretty astute. Froll, the country bumpkin who hates being called a woman, so let's respect his... their pronouns? We'll get to that. Ganga, who's a freaking cyborg full of MacGuffin, or, I mean, plant blood... And then there's Tata, who has keen mental insight and instinct. He's basically the main character. The others are just kind of... there. But I guess they were four wouldn't have been enough trouble for me to sprite for the title card, now would it? They all find themselves aboard the ship Esperanza, a word which means hope. It also has a bunch of bombs on it, is getting hotter because of its nearness to a star, and has plant life that gives off a space sickness there's no known cure for. So these cadets' final exam is a bit extreme. If the story's true, we're on borrowed time. It's the deadliest of all diseases, and we have no vaccine on the ship. Now that I'm reminded, I can remember stories about this cursed death ship, Esperanza. How could he possibly forget such a thing? Tata was only four years old at the time. Give the guy a break! The death ship Esperanza. <laughs> Yeah, there's a song by that name. Here's the printout on the temperature test I've been running. I isolated and heated a section of the vine. At 40 degrees centigrade, crystalline secretion started. The Del Red spotted fever virus began appearing almost immediately thereafter. Ganga might be the least luckiest guy in the galaxy because shit keeps happening to him. First he gets electrocuted and pieces of wire get stuck in him, requiring Tata to perform surgery to save his life. Then he suffers a relapse and is nearly blown up by Tata's dumb mistake. Perhaps he should stay at least quarantine distance away from Tata. Tata himself has some mixed luck. At one point, everybody is convinced that he is the 11th and a saboteur, so they chase him around the ship. He's finally cornered and shot, though it was only on the stun setting. If he hadn't pitied Frohl after he stole their weapon, who knows where he'd end up being led. Probably to his execution. Fortunately, cooler heads prevail when he provides a way to lower the temperature of the ship. Go on. If we seal off level 20 and set off an explosion of our own, it might push us back into a safe orbit. 
Oh, so the shaft of the elevator would act something like a nozzle or a big cannon barrel directing the explosive impact outward. In other words, we'd be trying to reverse the effect of the explosions that knocked us out of the original orbit we had. Yeah! Uh, it's risky, but if we pull it off, we can escape the blue sun's gravity. There are bombs hidden all over the ship, and we can use those as soon as we track them down. Even though it sounds crazy, it's workable. But alright, I promised I would get to it, and it's basically THE thing to talk about when it comes to this movie, which is the gender dynamics. You see, Frol is a hermaphrodite. Their people only have one man per group of children, and everybody else has to become a woman at a certain age. Frol's objective in taking the cadet's exam is to prove they have what it takes to bypass this rule and become a man like their older brother. So I guess I should refer to Frol with male pronouns like he, him, and his, based on what Frohl considers himself to be. But on the other hand, the ending is a whole other thing, and leads me to hesitate to use either gendered pronouns. Thus, there. In Frohl's culture, men have many wives to help them tend to their jobs, and they're the ones who get to go on adventures. Frohl has watched their siblings marry off, but has always been jealous of their brother the most. Frohl's determination to become a man, to have higher standing in their society, is why they bristle at being referred to as a girl or a woman throughout the movie. It's an interesting look at gender roles. Men in Frohl's society are so much more privileged than the women, despite being far outnumbered by them. Frohl ties their entire self-worth to the idea of becoming a man. When they come down with the space sickness in the climax, they would rather die than push the panic button that would end the exam, as it would mean throwing away their opportunity to be a man and giving up all standing in their society. I can't live as a woman, I don't know how. Don't I have any friends around here? Yes. In fact, we're all your friends here. What? Move out of the way so I can prove it. Noteworthy is the fact that when initially confronted with the mystery of Frohl's gender, their fellow cadets assume Frohl is the 11th, as they have been keeping a secret from the rest. That Frohl doesn't fit into a category they can recognize makes Frohl suspicious to them, until they can clear it up by explaining their situation. But hey, let's get our minds off of weighty things like the ability to determine one's destiny, gender dynamics, or the encroaching paranoia and mistrust between people pushed to the brink, I can't let this video get bogged down with things like that. I'm supposed to entertain here. Ooh, I know. I'm ready when you are. Frol, stop it. Ah! Look out! Don't try that again, buddy. I'm not scared of you. You're acting like a couple of five-year-olds. Come on, everybody. Now stop fighting and let's talk this over. It's too late for talk. <laughs> you like banana cream? Here! It took me all day to cook this dinner, stop it! Hey, I didn't start this fight, I'm just defending myself against these maniacs! Nobody calls me a maniac who gets away with the Chaco! I'm warning you! <laughs> stop wasting food! I haven't had a chance to eat my dinner yet! Here, catch! <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to completely spoil the ending, where you find out which of the cadets is the 11th, and what fate has in store for our not-quite-Lord-of-the-Flies-like band of survivors. But let's just say the ending is a little too... traditional for me. It was 1980s Japan, so it was to be expected, and I imagine the ending was similar in the manga, but I wish they would have subverted expectations instead of predictably meeting them. Day Were Eleven is one of those movies I can't say more about without giving away the whole thing. I already gave away quite a bit in just the short time I've discussed it, but I want you to seek it out and watch it for yourself. It's got this great kind of creepy vibe to it where you can feel the tension between the cadets, even if they don't all stand out as personalities. 
Ultimately, I think the movie is a lesson in teamwork and endurance in the face of adversity. Whoa, that was a fast one, my most triumphant bohos and valley girls. We went through that movie faster than old Ronnie Raygun ran out of excuses for Iran Contra. But hey, that movie was death the bomb diggity, my posse. The next totally tubular feature to look at is of the mecha variety. Until then, I got a motor. There's an NES to blow into with my name on it. See ya! I don't know why anyone would want to be a woman. I want to do things. 